Hi, hope you're all fine. Uh, today's lesson is Lost Springs Stories of Stolen Childhood by Anis Jang, an Andhra Pradesh writer who was educated outside, and her parents were actually well known writers themselves. And she was not just a writer, a poet, but she was a social activist as well. So, in this lesson, the stories of stolen childhood, she is actually putting forward two case studies here for us to understand the pathetic condition of kids, especially underprivileged. So, in this lesson, the first case study is happening at a slum in Delhi called Simapuri. Of course, as you know, I got first-hand experience in Simapuri. I've seen that slum myself. So Anis Jeng was living in Delhi and she used to watch a group of rag-picking kids. There were a group of rag-pickers, maybe some 10 to 14 years old. These kids used to come in front of a neighborhood every day, every day in the morning to collect garbage. And she used to pick up conversations with them. Initially, they were a bit reluctant to come to the Memsa, as she was lovingly called. And when she asked the eldest of them, he said his name was uh, Sahib. And uh, she asked him, finding, okay, in a what he called lovingly amiable way, she asked him uh, why he was coming to pick garbage instead of going to school. And he said that in his place there was no school to go. And then she jokingly said if she started a school, whether he would like to join. She said in a very casual tone. However, a couple of days later when she saw this boy again, the boy asked whether she had started her school. She did not know because those kids, there are not many people to give them help. And this boy, Sahib, his full name is Sahibi Alam. He is a migrant from Bangladesh. And when she asked uh, what, why he is actually doing this job or why his parents are doing this job. And uh, the lady once said, belongs to, okay, that means lady once said why they are doing it because though their place in Bangladesh was once beautiful, but the beautiful scenery won't provide any food. At least these people are happy to have something in their stomach when they go to bed. And uh, secondly, his name means Sahibi Alam, is uh, the Lord of the Universe, ironically. And these boys, they come for them. The garbage is different from what their parents, or what their parents, their parents actually looking at the garbage for. They collect the things that we throw off and they actually make something out of it or sell it and earn a livelihood. It's not one or two thousands, more than 10,000 garbage or rag pickers live in that slum area of Simapi. You see, you can see the pathetic condition, the makeshift houses. Initially, before they came, it was a wilderness. Still, it's now a wilderness, but not the same. It is filled with the semi-made houses and drainage flowing all open there. For Sahib garbage seeking, sometimes it's not just it's a wonderful place for them. Sometimes they may get a coin, sometimes some currency, and even some discarded things. Even when the author asked Sahib why she, he, is not, he was not wearing a pair of shoes, he was reluctant to answer because, you know, first of all, he claimed that his mother did not give him the pair of shoes, but actually she knew it was because of sheer poverty. Even the boy who was wearing a pair of shoes, they were mismatching. Some rich kids throw their worn out shoes and for them it is like hitting gold. They take all this trouble to keep their body and soul together. And she's wondering sometimes our requirements change. The author remembers a priest in Udupi district of Karnataka. Once Okay, he prayed so earnestly, he prayed for a pair of shoes. Later she found that nowadays even the priest kids wear shoes of high quality and going to some English schools. Time has, time has changed, but not for these kids. They are still the same. And looking at their condition, 
their condition, the how poor they are, and they will remain poor. And once she meets Sahib again, and this time he was not uh, having the rucksack for which collecting the garbage with him. He was carrying a milk can and she said to Anis, Madam, I stopped picking garbage. Now I work at a tea store and they gave me this much amount of money. And he walked, but this milk can, it appeared, seemed heavier than the rucksack he was carrying because earlier he was his own master. But now he has somebody to, what he called, obey to. So that is the first part. It is about Sahibi Alam and the pathetic condition of rag pickers in Delhi. Now talking about the second case study is about one boy called Mukesh. And he is different actually. Mukesh wants to be a motor mechanic. So what is he doing actually? Mukesh belongs to the caste of bangle makers in Firozabad. Firozabad is well known for its uh, bangle making industry. And thousands of people are engaged in these activities, hazardous activities of okay, glass bangle making. And of course, you know, child labor is rampant there. Lots of children are employed so hazardously because, you know, you'll have to heat the glass and looking at the fire for continuous period of time, they may even go blind. But Mukesh is different. He said he wants to be a motor mechanic. And he said one day he was going to drive, learn driving a car. And he dares to dream different. So when Mukesh once okay, asked the madam or uh, Anirchak, the writer, to come and visit his house, which is being rebuilt, she was, uh, she was surprised to see the rebuilding, uh, the rebuilt house is actually still a shanty, a makeshift house. A lady not much older than him, actually his uh, brother's wife. She's the only lady of the house, has to look after uh, this Mukesh, his brother and their father. They were all engaged in this, what he called, bangle making industry. And the old lady from that place told Anis Jen that she has never had a single full meal in her life. They are being exploited, exploited by the middlemen exploited by the police, exploited by the politicians. And they believe it is their karma because their grandfathers, forefathers, they all belong to this bangle making industry. And they think that they have to follow. Otherwise, breaking karma is a big sin. Of course, the people who cash in are these middle classes, or these middlemen or the politicians. Even if they try to form a cooperative, this police and the gundas, all these middle people will come and beat them up. They are poor and there is no one to speak for them. And that is a pathetic condition there. And this poverty is a vicious cycle of poverty. They create something, they take money from the money lenders and they do not have any escape from that vicious circle of poverty. And then after that, the Mukesh is slightly different because he wants to escape. He does not want to be tied to the karma, so-called karma that people or they, those people are talking about. That's why Mukesh wants to be different. So Mukesh here is thinking of becoming a motor mechanic. He said he was ready to walk the entire way towards a workshop that is far away from the place. When the author asked him whether he had any wish for flying an aeroplane, is embarrassed because no aeroplanes fly over Firozabad. For him, the next limited dream is the cars or becoming a mechanic of a car or drive a car, which he generally saw on the streets of Firozabad. So these two case studies show us the pitiful condition of child labor and how these malnutritioned, underprivileged children are in the state of perpetual poverty. Thank you.